Hi, I'm Roger Margolis, and I'm here at the AI Conference in San Francisco 2018. And I'm here with Joseph Sirach, who I actually know well and has come with an exciting prop. You've covered so many interesting things. What are you working on now? Yeah, this is uh, an arm that can see. Excellent. So it's, uh, it's 3D printed. It's got a camera in the palm of its hand. It's connected to the cloud. Now, a computer vision service in the cloud can recognize what the object the arm is seeing and then can trigger the grip movements so you can grasp that object, right? So that behavior is synthesized by the AI service. Now, this, what the amazing thing is how cheap it is. It uh, is made out of uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, an Arduino board, a few servo motors, and the whole thing cost about $100. Now, of course, the magic really is in the cloud AI service. The cloud AI service, you can train it, you can set it up to generate the behaviors you want. So if you want to grab a key, well, then you uh, learn to classify the grip required to grab the key. And then with sort of a muscle sensor, you can trigger that movement and it'll grab it. Right? And if you want to grab a wine glass, you hold it like this, and it will recognize a wine glass and do what's called a palmer grip. Just close the fingers around it so you can lift the wine glass up. And then with, again, a muscle uh, flex, so releasing the flex, you can keep it back. Imagine, imagine if every prosthetic device was like this. I mean, it's very transformatory. Because today, like the bionic arms you get, it costs tens of thousands of dollars. This is hundreds of dollars. It's backed by a cloud service. So it's trainable, adaptable. The device you can adapt to yourself as opposed to, you know, look at the prosthetics today. You, know, you have to train your body and your nervous system to control it and literally force your will into those devices. It's like you are adapting the device as opposed to the device adapting to you. And if you're sick, if you're tired, and if you can't really make those nervous twitches you need to control it, well, then that arm is not very functional anymore either. But that's not the case with a service where the behavior is generated by the cloud and it's motors that are driving it. It never gets tired. It's there 24 by 7. And it's personalizable. It's adaptable. And, you know, your friends could generate behaviors for you if you wanted uh, that might be useful in different environments. And very powerful when you think about AI backing up every prosthetic device in the world. Yeah, and just to mention the world, it sounds like at that price point, the, the availability, you know, WHO estimates there are 30 to 100 million people who live with a limb loss. And only 5 to 15 percent have access to a prosthetic device. Now we're talking about something at a price point where everyone could get it. And again, availability of this is completely changed when something like this can be 3D printed, can be mass manufactured, it's off the shelf electronic components. And you get it to a point where, look, you can, this becomes, um, replaceable. You know, the thing when uh, I read about it is uh, one doctor was observing mm -hmm. that if you, if you take a prosthetic uh, device or an arm from a handicapped patient to even clean it, etc., that patient keeps looking at you to see what are you doing with that precious arm of mine? Are you handling it carefully? It, it's become such a part of their body. Right. That it's, it, it, because it's a one-of-a-kind thing, and they've gone to such great extent to get that thing to work with them. And this, these sort of things change the game. Mm -hmm. And that's our power, right? And so, but again, the, the main difference, you know, we've had these physical devices and prosthesis, pro, uh, prosthesis for 2,700 years. Actually, the first one, do you know what the first prosthesis was? Uh, no, but I, I, know that I've, I know that they are old. Yeah. You know, the first prosthesis that we know of in human history is an artificial toe on an Egyptian mummy from 2,700 years ago. <laughs> and um, then there is even in the medieval era, the knights, uh, uh, there's a, a, a surviving iron arm uh, of a knight from the medieval era. He had lost his arm and he got an iron arm. But, I mean, these things have been physical devices, right? And materials have improved. But nothing has given it intelligence. And now you have the power of intelligence in a cloud service. The cloud AI service is the one generating behaviors. It's giving you autonomy. I mean, it's very powerful. I mean, given what, what's happening is given your goals and your constraints, 
the service generates a behavior for you as opposed to you fine grain controlling it. Right. Knowing what I know about AI and how these things work, yeah. does it being in the cloud mean that everyone is training everyone? So in other right. words, if you get one of these grips that works, does everyone have access to it? Right. So and that's a possibility, right? You can set it up to have access to the right things so you can pool data. Okay, you know, pool data, certain things become so much more accurate and right. effective. You can have other people, your friends, create skills for you. I mean, you may not have imagined certain skills. You might have a in the cloud a huge library of possible skills that you can pick from. Kind of a GitHub of exactly, <laughs> and it's like you know, uh, downloading behaviors for these can be like downloading an app or something simple, and then you test it and see if it works and so. So an unlimited set of possibilities open up when you have the cloud connectivity, and then the, it's an AI service, and then you can link it to other things and so on. That sort of that magical transformation, digital transformation, is not just about AI, by the way. Right? It's not just about a neural network that runs just in this one. It's that power of the cloud services, software as a service, and the connectivity it brings, and the globalization it brings. And by the way, that's the same digital transformation every company and every piece of software is going through. And I mean, this might be an example on a positive case, but look, everything in the world is going to be backed by a cloud service. The connectivity, the potential for pooling the data, the way to generate new behaviors, the way to share things appropriately, and just keep improving continuously. And in fact, I remember from one of your early conferences, right, Web 2.0 or something, you said, what's different about the platform of today, right? The fact that like, traditional software doesn't improve, but this new software constantly improves. That's the difference. Right, right. So I think you've hit on, when people talk about the cloud and they're like, what does it mean and stuff, I think you've hit on why it's so important. And from yeah. our perspective, <laughs> It's the fastest growing topic on our learning platform, one of the major topics. Right. Uh, even though it's been around for a while, it's right. because of, I think, what you're explaining. So this is so interesting. Thanks for doing such great work for the world, and thanks for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Fajr. It was a pleasure.